So it's weird. I don't ever talk about the Pro Bowl the day after or the baseball All-Star game the day after. But I do think the NBA All-Star game, especially when they have the uh, 75th All-Star team there, the all-time greats, is pretty cool. I think the NBA does a great job of taking the old guys and the new guys and uh, kind of romanticizing the past. I'm not really a romanticized the past guy, as you well know. I'm more about the windshield and the rearview mirror. But I did notice this, and it is something that the loudest cheer in Cleveland yesterday wasn't one of the many brilliant basketball players currently playing. It wasn't for LeBron James, who's from Akron and brought the Cavs a title. No. The greatest cheer was for a guy from Chicago who basically crushed Cavalier fans' dreams for years. You saw the Craig Elo shot. The loudest cheer, and I think it says something, was for Michael Jordan. The most popular former athlete in America is Michael Jordan. And he crushed Cleveland's dreams for years. Why is that? I mean, he was a great basketball player. There's been a lot of great football players and great baseball players. Michael wasn't always likable. We saw that in the documentary. I mean, he's a great basketball player, but he gets significantly more love than any former athlete. And I'll just throw this out there. Maybe it's because of what Michael stood for is what we're often missing. Michael had respect for fans. Michael didn't like the chumminess that we see today in sports. Michael could be territorial and provincial like fans are. Detroit and Chicago, Lakers in Chicago, Boston and Chicago. Michael hated the Lakers and the Celtics and the Pistons just like every Bulls fan did, and they could feel it. That's nothing against LeBron and KD and James Harden, but they're for sale. Their loyalty is the check. They have huge brands. They have each earned it. I have no animosity toward LeBron, Harden, and Kevin Durant. I've been mobile in my career. Many of you have. But Michael was loyal, fiercely loyal to Chicago and an owner that underpaid him for his entire stay. Michael Jordan was loyal to Phil and Dean Smith in Carolina. And Michael fought through adversity. And that lands with fans. Because maybe some of us out there are mobile and have opportunities, but most Americans don't. You have a job. You don't like a boss. It's really hard. You're not paid what you should be. And you just have to put your head down and mow through it. You just got to mow through it. I drive into work in the morning at 5.50 a.m. And there's a lot of cars on the road at 5.50 a.m. And in Los Angeles, those people are driving an hour a day to work. It'll be two hours home. Some of them don't have the opportunities. Every day is hard. And I'm not saying every day for Michael Jordan was hard, but he stood for what players now often don't really appreciate. He just put his head down and mowed through it. When Gordon Gekko made the movie Wall Street, it was not made to glamorize Gordon Gekko, but it did. It was a recruiting tool for young kids who wanted to work on Wall Street, men and women. And when you watch Jordan's documentary, there were a lot of warts. He could be petty. He punched the teammate. Some called him a jerk. One guy called him an a-hole. But in the end, Mike's disdain for his rivals. His pettiness, his intensity, his absolute hatred for all things not Chicago Bulls in winning. You could feel it, and you can still feel it. There was a respect for fans and a hatred for rivals. And I know, I know, we don't teach our kids that. But Michael has aged well, and not all old athletes do. He's not on Instagram showing you what he had for lunch. There's no cringy social media, no burner accounts, and he is not for sale. Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player, all things told, to fans. LeBron can do more things well, in my opinion, and you could certainly argue for LeBron. But the fact that Michael Jordan is the most popular former athlete in the history of the country, and we know his warts, and we know he punched a teammate, And we know he did things we don't love. And there's the gambling stuff. But there's something about his DNA and his core values. America says, I want that again. And I think a lot of it is the things we probably tell our kids not to be, the pettiness, the disdain for losing. Michael was a bad loser. 
But boy, was he a great winner. And it was good to see him for a day. Uh, here's something that wasn't great to see. Uh, yesterday, Michigan and Wisconsin, these are great Big Ten schools, great brands, wonderful athletic departments. One of the things that drives me nuts about college coaches, and um, maybe it's hard to avoid, they have a lot of power. They make more than the school president. They're often the highest paid state employee. They totally control personnel. I mean, Bill Belichick's great and rich, but Robert Kraft could fire him tomorrow. Robert Kraft told him, trade Jimmy Garoppolo, and Belichick had to. NFL coaches, even the all-time great Sean Payton, Andy Reid, Mike Tomlin, Pete Carroll, Bill Belichick, they got owners. And a lot of times they have quarterbacks who make a lot more than they do. So it forces, and it shouldn't say force, some people would do this naturally, but it forces professional coaches to treat everybody respectfully. What college coaches do is sort of nauseating. They all preach discipline, self-control. Bobby Knight's the ultimate hypocrite, yet have none themselves. Yesterday was two grown-ups acting like fools. Greg Gard is a coach for Wisconsin. Jawan Howard, the former NBA player, a coach for Michigan. Greg Gard should never touch Jawan Howard. I would suspend him. Jawan Howard touched him back defending himself, and then later threw a punch, which is the most severe action I saw yesterday by anybody. That's probably a four- or five-game suspension. I would not fire either. I'll fire you if you touch a student, if you throw a basketball, a kid, a chair like a Bobby Knight. But in this instance, Greg Gard and Jawan Howard failed as adults. I hear this all the time. Hey, you touch me, it's game on. Grow up. Politicians, Coaches, people representing universities all the time have to deal with schmucks and aggressive people. You've got to be the bigger man. Greg Gard had no, no reason to grab Jawan Howard, period. He should be suspended. You're representing a great school in Wisconsin. And Jawan Howard lost his cool later, a few seconds later, throwing a punch. He should not have. But can we get past this? Hey, man, you touch me, game on. That's good. You go coach junior college because these are big boy jobs and you're representing something far greater than yourself. Both coaches look like fools. And the under discussed part of this is as players watch the two coaches touching and jostling each other, players started getting into fights. I mean, good Lord. I've seen it from Woody Hayes. I've seen it from college coaches for years. Biggest man on campus, highest paid state employee. And it's what I appreciate about professional coaches. The players keep them in line. Sean McVay has to be respectful to Aaron Donald or he'd throw him through a window. (laughs) Yesterday was a failure of two grown men as adults making seven figures. They should have both in that moment been angry, rip each other at the podium Sometimes you have to smile and walk away. I know, I know, I know. Somebody touches me, game on. Coach Junior College. This is the Big Ten. These are big jobs. These are big responsibilities. With great great power comes some great responsibility. And I thought both coaches completely, utterly failed. I don't care who's at fault. It was a series of really bad actions. The worst was swinging at somebody. But Greg Gard has no right to put his hands on anybody. None at all. That's a general rule in society. You don't walk up to a store clerk. You don't walk up to an Uber driver. You don't walk up to another person and put your hands on them and invade their space. Stop defending him. That's accountability matters for Greg Gard, too. Please, college coaches, stop the hypocrisy. Stop preaching discipline and self-control when often you get in crisis and have none. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.